started to look at this amp right here to see if I can repair it. It's a CT125.4. Let's check it out. Doing some preliminary checks on this amp to see if it's going to be something simple or if it's even something I can even do. So one of the first things I do is to set my multimeter into continuity mode where it beeps. And the first thing I do is check across the power supply. Now this one charged up the capacitor just fine, but it's not shorted. Then what I do is I come down here and I check each of the channels. Now one thing I noticed is that this channel here, you see I got a reading on it, and it actually started charging the, the rail capacitors off of this one, which tells me that whatever the channel that is, is probably shorted on the output side. So I pulled all of the covers here off of the chips. These are all the output chips, and I want to check them all individually, and I want to check for continuity between any of the pins on the bottom side. There should be no continuity at all. All right, so let's check all these. That one's good, that one's good, that one's good, that one's good, oh, that one's bad, that one's bad, that one's bad, that one's bad. That makes sense, because all four of these are going to go to one of the channels. So I'm betting that whatever channel that is, goes to that one channel that I was reading back before. Likely indicating that... All that's wrong with this amp is that that one channel is bad. So if I get up under here, I can check from this channel positive to one of these here. Look at that. That's it. That's our bad channel right there. That simple. But while we're here, we're going to go ahead and check the other side as well and see if they're bad. The only one I determined that was bad earlier was just that one. There's four of these FETs per channel. Two for the positive and two for the negative, and that's just because of the output that it has. Pretty big output. That's the only channel that's bad, is this one right here. So the protecting circuit on this amplifier is pretty good. All it's going to do is it's going to check for any sort of short on the output rail. Obviously the output rails have a short on them, uh, or any shorts on the power supply. The power supply seems fine, so I bet if I remove those four right there, then the amplifier will just power on. It'll just only have three channels. Let's try it out. So we're going to check just one last time if anybody's got any doubts. We're going to watch the number go all the way down. That's a dead short. 0.3 ohms. That could just be whatever's in the meter right here. That dude is done. This portion of the repair I should be able to do on the top side here. I uh, shouldn't have to pull the board out or anything just yet. Okay, so the first stage of this repair here, I'm actually just going to put a little bit of solder, extra solder on these pins here. Because that old solder, no telling how long it's been sitting, maybe oxidized, etc. We're just going to put just a tiny bit on there. So now what I'm going to do is, if they're shorted, there's no reason to keep them anyways. I've already taken a picture of the orientation of which one goes where. So what I'm going to do is actually snip these all the way out like that. Also, I need to check the resistors. I need to make sure that they're good to go as well. And I like to make sure that when I check those... I don't have any weird um, external influences on their resistance reading, like you know going through here. So I like to just get rid of these. It's kind of barbaric. Don't worry. We're not going to reuse them anyways. We'll test them in just a second individually to see if if it was just one or all of them was bad. It only takes one to cause the whole circuit to go bad. Okay, so I just tested those off camera and it turns out one of the PNPs was good, one of the PNPs was bad, one of the NPNs was good, one of the NPNs was bad. So in this case, one of the positive and one of the negative was bad on each side, even though one of the other ones was still probably good. So for whatever reason, this channel got shorted and that's what caused it to die. I know that some of you guys are screaming at me already, bro, why did you cut those so short? Why this and that? How are you going to get them out of there? I'll show you how I'm going to get them out of there. I have this nifty little tool right here. I'm gonna grab them with the knitter nose pliers. Gonna heat that up. Grab the tip right here and 
just like that. Then you come back, do the old solder suck. Well, now what we have to do is check these little bitty resistors on the board right here. So these little bitty resistors run to the buffer circuit, to the driver, and they allow it to uh, actually fire the transistor. So these are 2.2 ohms. This one's reading 2.2 on the nose, 2.5, 2.6, and 2.2. So I would say all of these resistors are perfectly fine. Okay, so now we're gonna check it for short again. Nothing. Nothing, nothing, nothing. So with that output removed, it appears our short has went away. So now what we can do is try to put a little bit of power back to the amplifier and see if it comes to life. Certain that whenever we turn this on, that we don't have anything connected to the outputs that will be very bad. So let's go ahead and uh, just turn the remote on for a second and see if she comes on. All right, let's turn the remote on and see what happens. Okay, she turned on, and as you can see right there, no protection. So I'm willing to bet that if we put all the heat sinks back on, this amp would roar to life. So now that we've determined that the amplifier is actually turning on, it's no longer going into protection mode, uh, we can check the, for the rail voltage to see if the actual output section is getting power on the other rails. By doing that, I'm going to check here and here. I have 72 volts on the rail. I'm going to check here and here, 72 volts on the rail. So right now this amplifier is powered up and everything is working except for one channel. That one channel is removed. So theoretically all I have to do is purchase some new of these and put them in there and she'll work just fine. So seeing how this amplifier is working now that we've removed one of the output channels, I think I'm going to continue with the repair. I have a set of outputs that come off of a donor CT Sounds amp. Um, I'm going to check them out and if I wanted to, I can put them in there just to see if it's going to work. And if it does work at that point, I can get all four channels playing music. Then I'll just go through and I'll buy all new output FETs and I'll put all new output FETs across the whole board. So it appears that the four donor FETs that I have are exactly identical to the old ones and pretty close in batch number. But I think what I'm going to do is put them in here to see if everything else is working. And if that is the case, I will do like you're supposed to. And I'm going to order uh, 16 new FETs and replace all of the FETs across the board. But I think for right now, I can definitely tell by putting these in here if everything else works fine. I'll check all four channels with the oscilloscope, check the rails, check, check everything else, and uh, see if she's good to go. So we're going to disassemble this board completely, pull it 100% out of the chassis, and... Uh, Put in the new FETs. To test the front, to test the first bit, you don't need to pull everything apart. It does help, but when you're putting it back together, you do absolutely need to pull everything apart. It needs to come all the way out. You have to inspect the other side of the board. You don't want to just assume that there's nothing running down there because you'll have a big blob of solder that's going to short or something else or worse. One of the cool things about these CC amps is they actually rock in like that. Get the LED light out of the way. And if you were going to swap your LED light colors, this is when you would do it. Behind this panel right here is the LED lights. And if you wanted to solder on new colors, you would just solder them on right there. We're going to set this aside very carefully because we like it. And now we can see the actual board. There are some wires soldered to the board here presumably from the factory, to get these rails outside of here. For whatever reason, there's no traces on it. And there's not enough space for those long traces to go around the transformer. If this amp was a bit wider, they could just run those along the side like you would see in other amplifiers. This one is not like that, so not a big deal. You can see on this amplifier here, they have these running across to get power to the different sides of the amplifier. There's just not enough space to do something like that on this board. So while we got the amp flipped over, we're going to check all these pads that we did on the backside. We're going to clean them up and make them just 
by cleaning them on the back side as well. This solder iron does work like a solder iron, but it has the added benefit of sucking up the solder, which is great. We're just gonna make sure that every one of these pads is cleaned up perfectly. That way we can just drop the new ones in, easy peasy. Okay, now that we got all them pulled apart, got all the traces nice and clean, what we're going to do is actually insert the new ones, solder them on the front side just a little bit, and then pull it back out and finish solder the back side, and then we should be good to go. Okay, so our new ones, we have an A1694. There's two of them. I've tested them, they are identical. They're going to drop into these holes right here. I'm gonna put that one there, we're gonna go AACC. So the second one is also an A1694. So I'm gonna drop them to the hole right next to it. Then the other two are a C4467. They're going to drop into the holes next to them. And they will follow this pattern. In this case, the A's are towards the center of the board and the C's are towards the outside of the board. Okay, so now that they're dropped in just like that, we're gonna make sure that they're gonna fit on the clamps and everything else is gonna drive correctly and we're gonna solder the top side and then the bottom side. And with a fresh, clean iron, we're gonna start soldering these four here. Dust these little pads on the top. Because this is a dual layer PCB, I need to make sure that I get the bottom and the top side and you don't want to rely on the solder just sinking through, so we're just going to do the top side real quick, then flip it over, and then do the bottom side. Okay, so we've got all four of these soldered in here. We've got our two A's and our two C's on this side. All we've got to do is pull this back out and check the back side and make sure that everything else is driving uh, just fine as well. This little LED wire is kind of a pain but she will come out. Not a problem, there's the board. If this was a really big board, it would probably flex really crazy and you gotta be careful with it. This board's not too bad. So if we check our repair, which is right here, you just wanna come back on this side and make sure that you don't have any overrunning solder or anything crazy like that. So you just wanna come through here and make sure that they are nice and perfect and that there's nothing crazy going on. You just want a little TP of solder, you don't want a big blob. There we go. Now, I'm gonna clean this up. We should be ready to put it back inside and get it powered off. This is a part, I'll show you something really cool, okay? All four of these wires here go from the output rails. So this is the, uh, the output rails that actually all of these transistors are going to fire. And they're going over to the terminals for the four speakers. One, two, three, four. The cool thing about these is they have a common center point. So this great big wire right here, this eight gauge wire, comes from the, the center of the rail, the common point of the rail, and takes it back and connects directly to all the negative speaker terminals on this side. So all these negatives are attached directly to that one wire directly to the common side of the rail. Then all the positive sides of the rails, the high sides and low sides, they're run through these channels. So you have a high side and you have a low side and then each one is gonna run back from here to there to there to there. So you have a high side and a low side, a high side and a low side. And then that's how you get the bridge. So you have the common, the high side and the low side and when you connect directly to the high side and low side, your bridge. So all four of your speaker wires are going directly from here to the terminals and then the main common is going from that center point there over to the center point there. Super cool. Before we power this on and put everything back together, I've got to put the clips back on before I power it on. I'm gonna tell you guys that now. All the clips have to go on before you run any sort of uh, ohm load through them. But I'm gonna check it, just the sanity check. Make sure that everything is jiving. And making sure that the short is indeed gone and that these new FETs aren't doing anything crazy. Everything appears to be correct. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna give these a clean wipe down and I'm going to put all of the sides back on it 
and everything and basically uh, button it up and we're going to try to run power through it because what I don't know is if any of the output boards or anything like that is jacked up as well. So the way I get these clips off of here is actually with an Allen wrench. The way I put them back on is with a flathead screwdriver. So I'll put them down like that and I'll give them a nice big push. Now if you do it right, they should snap into place just like that. If you do it wrong, you'll probably run your finger and the screwdriver right through the circuit board and make things worse. You don't want to do that. If you don't center them up, you can get them on, but you may not be able to get them off. All right, so we've got it all put back together. There's our repair right there. And uh, now we're going to hook her up and see if she'll make any noise. We want noise on all four channels with no scratching, no weird stuff, no distortion. And if that's what we get, I'll order all the parts and do a full rebuild. Okay, so I've got everything connected up. I've been playing with it for a few minutes. This is connected to uh, the channels that are repaired right now. Unfortunately, I can't play any music right here. Uh, but yes, it is working. Basically, uh, this is channel 3 and channel 4. That is channel 1 and channel 2. Very, very simple little setup. And uh, yeah, it's working. So uh, if I play them each individually, they sound about the same. And if I play uh, bridge on each channel, it works. The whole thing just works flawless. Super nice. And you can see there's the repair right there. Those ones. So I'm going to order all new outputs for this guy. And uh, I'll just rebuild the whole thing. I'll need to get some more... Uh, Flux cleaner, but basically that's it. That's a repaired amp. Cool. And there you can see, no protection, super nice.